Dear family and friends in Christ, may God's grace, mercy, and His rich peace be with you this day and each day. Amen. Please bow your heads in prayer with me, and we pray. Heavenly Father, we give thanks to you for the true peace that comes in your Son, Christ Jesus. Prepare our hearts and prepare our lives as we look forward to our Christmas celebration, His coming. Help us to each day to celebrate not only His first coming, but to look forward with joy, with confidence, to his second coming as well. And may this be the peace which transcends all understanding. May it guard our hearts and minds this day and each day. Amen. Well, seems like another Thanksgiving is on the books. It is over. Maybe your house still smells of turkey. Maybe the smell of pumpkin pie smell still lingers a bit. But you've probably got most of your Thanksgiving decorations put away. You've probably avoided the scale for the last three days knowing that you don't want to see that number. But can you believe it? Advent is already here. Advent is already here. It just seems like it was a few days ago that it was Thanksgiving, that fall had finally come. And here we are already in Advent. And before you know it, less than a month from now, we'll be celebrating Christmas. Where does the time go? It seems like it goes so fast, doesn't it? Time and again I've heard, as I've talked to people as they get older, that not only does time go fast, but it seems like exponentially faster the older you get. And how true it seems that we look back and we say, where did the time go? So are you ready? Are you ready for time to go and ready for Christmas? Are you ready? Uh, do you have your list checked? I mean, there's got to be time to check it twice, right? Are you ready? Not all of us are, are we? But that's why I like Advent. Because Advent gives us this time to get ready for Christmas. Advent gives us this reprieve, this time to reflect on God's Word, to consider the promises of old, to consider the prophecies, what God has told us that He was going to do. Advent is a time for us to consider the comfort that God gives us, the joy that comes in His Son. It's a time for us in this season of comfort and joy to consider God's peace, His pardon, His presence, His promise, and to prepare us. Today we start out with a text in this, in this series, on, and it's just these first two verses of Isaiah chapter 40. And they're beautiful verses, aren't they? Most of us know at least the first part by heart. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem. And proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed. That her sin has been paid for. That she has been received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. You know, Isaiah, he wrote those words to a community not so different from our very own. He wrote those words to a community that was struggling with great amounts of fear. A community that had been, well, wrestling with God's hand in their world in their lives. Let me take you back to Isaiah, his calling. If we go back to the beginning of Isaiah, we see that the Lord called him to the northern kingdom. Remember that the, the kingdoms had split, that there were ten tribes of the north and two tribes of the south, and that there were two kings. And in this northern kingdom, time and again, time and again, you look at that text and it says, and this king did bad, this king did evil in the eyes of the Lord. And so God sent his prophet Isaiah. In the 8th century, he sent him to bring the message to these people, a warning message. And that's where Isaiah starts out. He starts out by describing the people who he's come to. A people who are self-indulgent, hedonistic. A people who will gladly step on the poor to make sure they get the best Black Friday. Uh, oh, excuse me, to make sure they could rest on their ivory couches. And you see time and again in the description that Isaiah gives, not a people of God but a people who care only about themselves. Not a people who love God, but a people who love their own pleasures. In fact, in Isaiah chapter 2, Isaiah warns the people. He warns them what is going to happen because God is not pleased with the way they're living. He says, For the Lord of hosts has a day against all that is proud and lofty, against all that is lifted up, and it shall be brought low. Against all the cedars of Lebanon, lofty and lifted up. And against all the oaks of Bashan, against all the lofty mountains. 
against all the uplifted hills, against every high tower and against every fortified wall, against all the ships of Tarshish and against all the beautiful craft. And the haughtiness of man shall be humbled and the lofty pride of men shall be brought low and the Lord alone will be exalted in that day. These people who were exalting themselves, who were putting themselves first, would see this day of the Lord. And by its description, a scary day. Well, they didn't take Isaiah's message very seriously. And so in 722 B.C., the Lord used the Assyrian army, quite a powerhouse in that day, to steamroll right over the northern kingdom. In fact, they would have kept going had the Lord not heard the prayers of a faithful king in the southern kingdom. Maybe you know his name. Hezekiah, one of the few that has a comma after his name who did good in the eyes of the Lord. Otherwise, the southern kingdom would have fallen just as the northern kingdom. From this day forward, 722 B.C. on, there is no such thing as another northern kingdom anymore. The people of God who were the people of God in the northern kingdom have been separated, have been, been pushed out. They have no land to call their own, no king to rally beneath. And Isaiah is writing these words for them. He's writing these words, comfort, comfort, you people. They didn't know what was to happen next. They didn't know how the Assyrians would deal with them finally. They lived in fear. They didn't have internet feeds that they could get on or 24-hour news tickers going by on their screen. They didn't have a Twitter account that they could tweet and say, you know, we're safe and sound. Instead, they lived in fear because they had no information. And instead of leaving them in that fear, God sends them a message of hope and comfort. Instead of leaving them in that fear, He sends them the, this prophet Isaiah to comfort them. For 39 chapters, Isaiah, He had warned them. He did. Read Isaiah 1 through 39, and you'll see warning and warning. And then all of a sudden in chapter 40, you see this compassion. And all the way through the end of the book, you see these words of comfort, of peace. But there is this one spot early on where Isaiah gives them this promise of peace. Early on, Isaiah chapter 9, a text that's often read at Christmas. He gives them this promise of when the Lord will restore them. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of deep darkness, on them has light shone. You have multiplied the nations. You have increased its joy. And just a few verses later, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. In the midst of this war-turned country, these, str these struggling people, they have the promise that God will send peace to their anxiousness. The Prince of Peace. And the Lord gives to us the same promise that He will send to us peace. Now so often it's hard for us to hear that. We live in a world that promises peace, or relative peace anyway. A world that brings peace by changing a schedule. Maybe a mood stabilizer here or there. But that doesn't really address the problem, does it? It only addresses the symptom. As so much of the world does. It addresses the symptoms, but not doesn't get to the heart of the issue. And God, on the other hand, in sending His Son Jesus, gets to the very heart of our anxious lives. It gets to, he gets to the very heart, to the root of all of our anxiousness. The sin that we live in each and every day. He gets to the heart of it and He sends His Son, Christ Jesus, to be the true Prince of Peace who comes to this earth bringing to us a message of hope and salvation. As Greg was reading Romans chapter 5, we have this beautiful message from Paul. This message that we start out with this suffering. But the suffering, the suffering produces endurance. 
the endurance character, and what does the character produce? Hope. Hope in our Lord. Hope in the promise that this is not all that there is. Hope that as He came the first time, that He is coming again to bring to us peace throughout the earth. But we are anxious people, aren't we? We need hope for right now. Not hope for the future, we know it's coming. But hope for right now. We're people who, instead of unlike the Israelites, we have too much information. How many of you followed the Malaysian Airlines flight and knew day after day, wondered what happened to those passengers? Wondered alongside their families. If you turned on your TV, you could not only find out about Russia entering into Ukraine, but you could be on the ground with the reporters, with live coverage, cell phone recordings. Or this last Monday, How many of you had your televisions on when the grand jury decided to let the the country know the decision not to indict? If you were watching TV, you could see the smoke. You could hear the gunshots. We have too much information. We have nowhere that we can go to rest. Nowhere that we can go to find peace. We're constantly inundated by information. Constantly our lives have some noise going on in the background. Constantly, constantly is there the news or whatever else it might be. And the Lord invites us to come to Him in peace. To pause. To stop for just a few minutes. To rest. He invites us to come into His house to for an hour, hour and a half on a Sunday morning to shut out all those crazy things going on in the world and come to Him again. Come to Him as He invites us, as He says to us, Come unto Me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for my soul for your souls. Isn't that the invitation our Lord gives us during this Advent season as we prepare for Christmas? Is to come unto he, come unto him with all of our concerns, with our unwrapped packages and our unfinished lists, to come to him with all of our concerns about family and friends to come to Him with our financial concerns. And He will give us rest for our souls. True peace. Not the peace of the world which continues only lasts so long. But the true peace that gets to the root. The peace that comes in knowing Jesus. It's interesting. Because many of you, as you get ready for Christmas, I'm sure you'll find yourself like we do in our household. Decorating the house. Transforming your living rooms and your dining rooms to joyful Christmas scenes. If you're like our family, you probably have at least one manger scene. In fact, the Berkey household has several of them because Carla likes to collect them. But you know the basic basic setup of a manger scene. You have a cow or two. You have a sheep, a a goat. you, You have a wise man or three. You have Mary and Joseph and a manger. Have you ever noticed that the smallest piece of that manger scene, sometimes as small as my pinky here, that the smallest piece is the most important piece? Have you ever noticed that the focus of the manger scene would not be complete without the tiniest piece? The tiniest piece which brings you peace. Jesus. Jesus wrapped in cloth. Jesus lying in the manger. Jesus, that peace that brings Christmas together, that brings hope to each of us. Jesus, that peace which brings true peace to the hearts and lives of believers. Now may the peace of God which transcends all understanding guard and keep your hearts and minds. Amen. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, We know that in this time leading up to Christmas, there is so much anxiousness in our lives. 
that throughout our days there's anxiousness, concerns, and fears. We turn those over to you, knowing that you are not only hear our prayers, but you answer them. That you not only are aware of our sufferings, but you have endured them. That you walk with us through each and every trial we face. Lord, help us to know peace. Help us to know the true peace that comes in knowing you. Knowing you came as a baby in Bethlehem. But the peace of, and promise that you will come again to call your, your people home. Help us to know, to come unto you. To know that when we do, that your yoke is easy, your burden is light. That you will give us rest for our souls. We pray that you would give each of us your rest, now and always. And in your son's precious name we pray. Amen.